Have you ever had the question, am I building the right thing? Well, in today's video, I want to share a plan with you guys that I've seen accumulate over the past five years. What UI UX designers think of in terms of app design and in terms of what principles back that up and what we should change in, in order to make a efficient and effective user experience. So in today's video, I want to walk you through a little wire flow of humdrum a demo that we've been working on that can help inform you of what strategy to use for your own app that you'll be building in bubble.io so grab that popcorn let's dive in today i wanted to do a little plan of action marker now over the last five years i have mentored hundreds of mentees from ucsd to springboard about ui ux design and in my own 16 year career i've seen a lot of onboarding, sign up, uh, from beginning to end, these projects, they go a little something like this. We have a loading splash screen with the logo in the middle. And this is sort of like building brand awareness as the page loads. Then we go to a sign up page where we have them create an account and log in. And there's some fancy ways of doing that with Log in with Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. depending on where you're channeling people from in the market. But for now, let's try to own the data, the, the signups, instead of borrow them from other platforms. Let's just try to own it for now with basic email, login, sign up. All right, and so after that, we finally get to this like home feed landing page. And typically there's a, a, a variety of ways that this is organized. It could be a list of things. And if there's a list of things, there's usually this like secondary page that's like the map view of it. And you could toggle list view and map view back and forth, okay? And so you might see something like that here and then something like that there this being a little map pin and this being a hamburger menu and so you could toggle that this is like the immersive you get to actually touch it it's uh, called direct manipulation psychology where humans rather touch the thing rather than a button or a menu and this list is for perhaps faster skimming and scanning and users can uh, click it to take further actions on said thing. And together, I would call these a, a landing or a home feed. This is where we are passively just giving some love to the user that just logged in, okay? Now there is a debate on which comes first here, the chicken or the egg, the heart, the horse or the cart, uh, because if you wanna give value, you would give them the list right away and then when they interact with this list in any meaningful way, then you would ask them to sign up to save their progress. A lot of people like to put too much onboarding up here. Remember, don't do this because usability is the opposite of training. So if you're teaching people how to use the app prior to using it, it means your app's not usable. And so we don't wanna do this. We don't wanna do any teaching, any marketing, we just want to get out of the way and get them to value as soon as possible. And that's why with Humdrum, we actually do have a home list. And this is, these are like play buttons and this is music. And then we could have a little heart there. And so this is like following someone, liking someone. And so where does that, where is that stored? And that would be a profile. Okay, so here we have like a profile picture and then maybe a list of different activities that this person has done and maybe some stats for which they have and maybe you get there uh, from a, a variety of places uh, depending on the app so they sign in and now they have sort of ownership of their data and things that they've corresponded to in the experience now you could call this a profile you call it a settings, etc. 
they come here to adjust their account, their details, subscription, etc., in that profile area. And then there's two views of that. There's the public and the private. Okay, so you're gonna have two views of that. In one instance, it's a visitor coming to see if they wanna follow us or not because of this activity. And in the other case, it's us ourselves coming to maybe edit the photo or some of the activity. So that's the profile settings area. Now, with that said, we have a very short onboarding. They can learn by doing in the app and they can set some settings over here. Now there's one more page. It's called the user generated content interface, let's say. So this, you might see it at the, the bottom center of a lot of these apps, this like plus icon that allows you to um, submit data to it, whether it's a photo for Instagram or a, a video for TikTok, etc. There is this user generated content and that's because we have like this two-sided marketplace. On one side we have creators, and on the other side we have the users or the consumers. Let's let's call them a consumer because both of these are users, right? And so because we have these two personas, and the ba a mentor once told me that the internet is nothing but people talking to each other, and that's kind of what we're facilitating here, this conversation, but we're using a different medium. Now, with a lot of platforms, it's, we have video, we have uh, still images, we have text in the case of Twitter, we have audio in the case of podcasts and Clubhouse, and with Humdrum, we're doing audio. And so instead of an image, you're gonna see that we've been using just like a, a instead of a plus even like a little microphone. And so we have this microphone here. And that's how to add things to this list. Alright? So instead of a map view on Humdrum, we actually have this user generated content interface right? where we might have some sound waves coming out of it so we're not necessarily doing the map but the the audio for ours and so it's, it flips back and forth between the list and the audio screen that's sort of the par for the course that we're going through with UXpreneur here as an example demo of what you guys can do with your own projects using Bubble.io. So I wanna show you how to do this splash page first because first things first, then we're going to do the sign up, sign in, log out. Then we've already done this list kind of view and the audio recording. We've already combined those even, so we've already done that part. So then we need to do this profile after that. And then finally, we're gonna zoom in on a component, which is the play button, the title, and the heart. I think that this heart is a big deal for Humdrum because it's essentially saying that I like this, and so it's giving that positive feedback, and it also allows users to, to sort of collect things in their profile that they like and potentially give somebody to follow them on the platform. So introducing people to each other, new people, about a 15 second audio demo, maybe that'll work, maybe not, but that's what we'll be building with Bubble.io. So I wanted to show you guys this today so you could see what is the plan moving forward and the the hypothesis here is that by building this, we'll create this engagement of an icebreaker, if you will, for people to meet one another new online. So what did we learn? We learned that a lot of us think that onboarding should teach people about the value proposition and the features that entail in the user experience, but instead of burdening users with that 
cognitive overload, we should just get them into the app as soon as possible. So shrink our onboarding to only be excruciatingly what is necessary. Another thing is, instead of having them set preferences or take quizzes up front, we want to just have a settings area or a filter in the settings area that they can tweak things and you need to take your best informed guess as to what the default settings should be. Instead of asking permission, ask forgiveness in the settings area. That's called anticipatory design. We also learned that a lot of the web is a multi-sided marketplace where we have creators on one side and consumers on the other. And then ad revenue is generated to keep the business alive or subscriptions. And you can do the same. Right now we have a plane flying overhead exactly the same time each day. Interesting. All right, we also learned that we need to just build a standardized sign up, sign in, and log out so we can actually remember people's settings and enable people to follow one another. Finally, we talked about the heart and how we're going to use the heart to show and provide likes to one another so we get that feedback in our app. There's gonna be notifications associated with that and push notifications, and we're gonna get into that with Bubble.io. So for the next few videos, we're going to be going through how to put a splash screen on your Bubble progressive web app, how to log in, log out, and how to follow one another with a profile and a follow button. Finally, we'll take a look at the heart icon and how to count and increment likes and save those to a user profile. So if those aspects are a part of your progressive web app or whatever you're building with Bubble, then subscribe and stay tuned because that's just what we have in store for you over the coming videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Click the like button if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and click the bell notification so you're notified about the next video. And I'll see you there, bye.